In 1871, however, Halliday would get his wish. A mechanics member named Horace Dunn, who was secretary to the consul of Japan at the time, was on his way to Japan on business. Halliday asked him to obtain from Japan a full exhibit of its raw and manufactured goods and to draw attention to its government about the articles made by California that Japan could import much more cheaply than from Europe. Dunn was charged with inducing the Japanese government to send commissioners to visit and report upon the forthcoming exhibition. Dunn was more than successful. In fact, he returned triumphantly in mid-July with 85 tons of goods from Japan and China. The Japanese had sent an extensive exhibit including pieces of art, samples of wood, fiber, cereals, uh, fabrics, swords, bronze work, uh, cabinetry, skins, paper, and lacquer goods. It was probably the second time they had exhibited in a foreign land, the first being the Paris Expo of 1867. Unfortunately, there are no known photos of it, and so what you're looking at is a copy or a page from the catalog. Horace Dunn also brought with him nine commissioners headed by Junjiro Hosokawa, Commissioner of Agriculture in Japan. They were to remain in California for the next several months to inspect and report upon the manufacturers and resources of California. In preparation for this exhibition, Halliday enlarged the Union Square Pavilion by 20,000 feet. So now the building was 100,000 square feet. He also opened up the South Wing's ceiling, roofing it over just with canvas so as to permit the flourishing of a giant garden. This exposition was a resounding success. Its best single day featured an unbelievable 22,000 visitors. The 1870s were one of tremendous growth for the fairs. In the 70s and 80s, fairs would typically see 600 to 800,000 guests in the four weeks it was open. From 1874 to 1881, the fairs were held south of Market at 8th and Mission. The best photographically documented fair that I'm aware of is the 1879 fair, so let's explore it. Inside, there were usually two fountains circled by a ring of chairs. This was an excellent place to people watch. Carlton Watkins always photographed our fairs extensively. He spent most of his time, however, shooting individual displays of companies as they were the most likely to pay him for copies. Here we have the Figer Brothers carpet sweeper, the ladies' friend, Thompson Soda, and also a gorgeous display in the back of stained glass by John Mallon. Here we have Bowen's yeast powder, Pacific rolling mills, and a cider display on the balcony. Perhaps that was Martinelli's, which we're serving tonight. Back then, it was much more fun, though, because it was alcoholic. <laughs> Note also the giant wine cask. Uh, the fruit of local vintners was always a huge part of the exhibitions. Free tastes only enhanced the carnival-like mood, I'm sure. Uh, the Institute did a lot to bolster the California wine industry, but that's the subject of a whole other lecture. And here we are at the garden. If 
you look at the back wall, you'll note that it's painted with a mural to give one the impression that the garden went on forever. And the other side of the garden had a waterfall. Um, this was powered by a steam engine and constructed of natural rock covered with moss and other plantings. Uh, the passageway just to the left of the falls allowed one to go underneath them and reconnect with the main room of the pavilion. And then this illustration, my favorite, um, this comes from The Wasp, which was a weekly satire magazine founded by the Corbell brothers uh, before they got into the champagne business. Uh, this picture is wonderful. Um, we have the Mechanics Institute here being personified by Minerva, the Roman goddess of wisdom, patroness of the arts and crafts. Uh, she's handing out laurel wreaths to the cherubs, toting the products made by local companies. Um, we have here the Pacific Saw Blade Manufacturing Company. Um, on the far left, we have a cherub holding a bottle of Gundlach Buncho wine. And also in the middle, you see Patrick Kelly's shoes. I also want to draw your attention to the left of Minerva's hand. What do you see there? It looks remarkably like a movie camera. Yes, Edward Mybridge's photos of the running horse were on display, uh, had a special display um, at the 1878 exhibition. And right next to the saw blade, you'll also see what looks like a cylinder phonograph without the, it's without the horn. Um, Edison had only invented it a year earlier, but it swept the nation and by May 